Um, I've been on sets where there's like 150 people running around and you what the are they all doing here? And then I've been on sets where there's been like six of us and we kind of do what the same 120 people do. There's a reason why they're so successful and why Hollywood is the biggest sort of entertainment industry in the world. And so they, they make sense, you know what I mean? If you are a, a, a builder and you're building a house and you're going to go, no, 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 I'm not going to start with the foundation, I'm going to start with the roof. You're going to get that wrong. <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome back to Department Spotlight, which is the show where we speak to our friends and colleagues about their experiences in the film industry. Today we are speaking to Sans Munsami, actor, director, comedian. He has basically worked in every single department. He is also a successful business owner of Sandman Productions, which has been running successfully for the past 20 years. So in part one of our conversation, Sands is going to tell us all about how he started, where he came from, and a little bit of his background, as well as his early experiences in the industry. So without any further ado, let's get into it. To start us off, could you maybe just introduce yourself to say a little bit about um, your experience? Oh, okay. Where do I start? Okay, so I'm, I'm Sands Bansami. I'm running a company called Samuel Productions. This year, 2021, my company turns 20 years old. Um, so something I'm very proud of. Oh, Obviously, wow. it was a company that started in, in different spheres of entertainment and it's over many, many years. But yeah, look, up, I've been running it for the last, what, the, the first 13 years, pretty much myself. And the last seven, I was joined by an amazing partner in Kiro Kirsten Kellen, you know her. And yeah. she's, she's taken, helped me take the journey, um, particularly into film to another level in terms of our company. But yeah, I mean, I've started off as a, an actor and comedian myself. I did study film at the University of Natal many, many, many years ago. But film was a different ball game, I think, 20 odd years ago. And um, I spent a lot of time on different film sets, TV sets, commercial sets. And what I used to do in order to learn the business and sort of, if, I mean, you guys, your show is called department so i used to spend the time in every single department um on different sets just trying to master or understand it better um and that's how i kind of learned so i learned every different piece of of sort of the film and, and shooting industry and storytelling industry um literally by just asking questions. I used to be the irritating guy that I couldn't stand there with the sound guy and like just talk to him and then he'd be like, shh. <laughs> but, you know, I'd be there asking questions all the time, uh, whichever department it is. So when it comes to even lighting or cinematography or just cameras, just every single person, I, I kept questioning, who's that person? What, what are they there for? Okay, I need to know why. Um, yeah. I've been on sets where there's like, kind of 150 people running around and you're like, what the hell are they all doing here? And then I've been on sets where there's been like six of us and we kind of do what the same 120 people do. So obviously it's harder work and, and all of that. Yeah. But look, it's an amazing industry to be a part of. And being a South African in this industry, it's quite a quite an awesome challenge to to have that, like I said, you know, to be able to learn, you know, in, in, in other industries um, like America and, and, you know, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's, a, it's a solid, solid industry. Yeah. You don't get to learn the, the way that we actually do here. So it's actually, it's, it's an amazing blessing to be a part of all of that. And it's because there's, everything is very departmentalized. You do your thing and that's it. Whereas here we've got multi-skilled people who can film, do sound, light, do it all, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's become a, a multi disciplinary uh, field particularly in South Africa and we're blessed to have that so yeah. that's in short my sort of history like I said I've I spent a lot of time as an actor but I've always been a storyteller from a live perspective and obviously yeah. we translated that in, 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 into film you know we, whether the story is about one of our specialties me particularly being a comedian as well comedy was was one of my specialties but you know at the end of the day as, as filmmakers everything's about a story so whether it's mm -hmm. comedy whether it's drama whether it's a horror whether it's a thriller at the end of the day i'm here to try and tell a story in the best possible way that mm -hmm. i that i can Amazing, yeah. amazing. So that in a nutshell is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I also just wanted to know from my side, um, 
Where did like the passion for it come? Was it always something that was in you, or was it? Because I mean, if you, I know you started it pretty early on. So where did that come from? That wanting to be in the entertainment industry was it according to the comedy part or according to acting? What kind of just wanted you to move into that, or was it always just in you? Well, I think I've always been in the entertainment field. I think my family was an entertainment family. I think I attribute a lot of my passion and the the ignition of of the the the, the performance spot to to my granny uh, she was the tamil school teacher so tamil is a is is a, is a language um, an indian language and obviously we've got our roots uh, my family roots is from there um, we like what i don't know how many generations south african but you know that is our sort of heritage and probably two generations before me they put effort into at least trying to maintain uh, mm-hmm. some level of heritage but we were of that age where everything was sort of westernized and we almost left left it behind because we were somewhat i wouldn't say embarrassed but like you know we we felt the other thing the priority trying to make it in the western world mm. um and I, and I, and i say this now i'm 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 42 years old now with so much regret because i can't actually speak the language and my granny was the teacher and when i actually traveled to india uh, many years ago i went there going oh my god I wish I had learned my language because now I can actually benefit from some of the local cheap prices of things. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but uh, but as I was saying, you know, in terms of my my journey, it's like I think I was performing on stage uh from the time I was like I think 5 or 6 or something like that. Mm. And when I was 10 years old, I wrote my first play for for school. So I was in standard 3 grade 5 mm-hmm. now. Um and I wrote my first play for for school and um I'm sure it is atrocious but I remember it so clearly um <laughs> and I, I think I haven't turned back and obviously like it, that's what I'm saying it was my joy for storytelling mm. um and sort of entertaining and performing in front of people which never stopped you know like I said you know I've I've some of my shows my comedy shows my theater shows or some of the not just the best selling but highly entertaining shows uh, that's been around I, i was so blessed to work with some of the most amazing talent uh, some of the most awesome actors um in south africa and beyond but um i think that's one of the greatest joys of of my career is that i got to work and collaborate with so many wonderful people wonderful talents which you learn from yeah. um and i think that also helps in the in building the 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 storytelling I noticed on your LinkedIn right it says that you worked at Platinum Holdings for four years and this was during the same time that your production company started so can you tell us a little bit about why was that just like as a safety net or what what was that the thinking behind that and why did you decide to wow. leave there Look LinkedIn had, that LinkedIn has been updated probably for about 10 years now. So, <laughs> so we need to we need to really look at that I think. But yeah look so so when I finished um university I was so blessed like from the time I was in first year um I actually got into the honors play and um so I virtually went sort of professional um within my I think it was when I was in second year. So one of the things i'm very proud of is i did um a stage play called war cry mm-hmm. which was written by john funderet mm-hmm. now if you guys know film in south africa john mm-hmm. funderet also wrote spud yeah um, all, all all of the spud books so yeah. war cry was actually the inspiration for spud wow so spud, oh. spud was based on 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 war cry um pretty much the same story it just obviously they fleshed it out for film and Mm-hmm. um brought and again I also worked John John van der Rate himself acted in that one we were at university together and amazing bunch of guys probably one of the most fun um projects I've ever worked on all the guys we had set such a blast and obviously we were we were all young back then um so this was around about 98 99 and the, the war cry the play went sort of all over we performed all over the country that kind of thing so so basically from there i went on to uh, like a whole lot of other shows so for about 2 years after i finished studying i literally had work that was just coming in that it was constant and i was like this is great what are all these people complaining about man like this industry is not tough like <laughs> this, is, this is amazing and then literally like 2 years into it like damn like that the work just stopped 
Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, okay, now you know, what I'm going to do. And then like, obviously you've got bills to pay and like mm -hmm. got used to having money and earning money and stuff. And then you're like, oh God, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So now steps were like six months and like no calls came in, no nothing. Like, you know, I'm now like a 21 year old. I'm like, okay, I need to get some money in here. Yeah? And I applied for a job. And at that time, when I studied, uh, one of the one of the things I studied with my degree was psychology. And I also specialized in like mm. um, industrial psychology. Mm. So using the, the available sort of qualification that I had, I went and got a job at Platinum Holdings um, and I was doing all the, the training and, and stuff there. So I to travel a lot. And for almost four years I was a part of that company it was actually awesome because it wasn't mm. just the training the organization culture was great it was a fun place to to, to work at uh, the people I got to meet was just was stunning so it was a great journey yeah. I was there for mm. four years and but my company was still running I was still doing my life my life stuff but I was doing it like sort of on the weekends and when mm. I was doing it on my uh, leave time so it got oh. to a point where the travel and mm. stuff became a uh, became a lot for me and then I got offered a really cool role I think it was in 2004 2005 and the money for that role wasn't as good as what I was earning pretty much every month and I, I had to make a big decision going well is this what I want to do am I, am I, mm. am I an actor or am I working in in, in this corporate business mm. and I made a decision then to really put effort into the company. I took on that role, which was probably for me, one of the pivotal decisions I've made, one of the best decisions. And I started running my own company. And within the first month, I'd already earned what I would have earned probably in maybe six months to wow. eight months or oh, something. Wow. Wow. Um, so, so I quick, quickly turned over what I was, and, and I haven't looked back since. Um, obviously That's we've beautiful. had our tough times and, yeah. Um, and all of that in between as, as a normal in every business does. Um, but you're always looking to reinvent and find new yeah. things. And I think that's been for me, the, one of the things I'm, I'm probably most proud of is that the company keep, kept reinventing itself. It went from doing and originally doing live shows, started doing sort of um, edutainment. Then mm. I started, you know, developing um, stuff, you know, got into the sort of film industry when I moved up to Joburg back in 2007. Because remember, Durban never really had much of a film industry. Mm. So mm. anything that was TV related or film related was all aspirational. But I think I always was a dreamer and I believed, hey, one day I'll get to do all of those things. Yeah. Um, it's such a weird thing because when I was at university, I had this lecturer who we never quite saw eye to eye. And he said to me that when we did our, our I think it was second or third year TV program or whatever it was. And he said to me, ah, you'll never make it on TV. Your face, your features are too round. So what? you're oh, just, you're not going <laughs> to. And that moment, I still remember thinking, I'll show you. I'll yeah. show you, you bugger. Yeah. You, you, you're going to put me down, I'll show you. And, and where is he now? Uh, Look at you. <laughs> uh, look, I think I think I think he still was lecturing there and stuff for a long time, and we eventually worked together on another project where he was actually very insightful. Oh, um, um, you know, uh, yeah. but that that but it served as a good sparked, catalyst, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they always served for me to. It was always at the back of my mind to go. You know what? I'm always gonna I'm gonna do well. Not not mm. necessarily for him, but for myself. Mm. But it was always yeah. there. You know, that little. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Cheeky little thing that doesn't like, yeah. ask. Yeah. Oh, I'll, show, I'll show you. My guy. Yeah, I think you need those moments every now and then. Honestly, like, yeah. I think that honestly, um, it's not anything to be in your face, but it's to be like you proving it to yourself that not just for him that I can do with this and it's not about the features and all that. It's about how you use everything and and and, and I think and I think that really played into it quite well because yeah, I mean, look, and look, by no means have I even come close to making it to show him i still got a lot more to come and a lot more to do um <laughs> to actually look back and say yeah. hey sans we know you've yeah. really achieved a lot but yeah so i'll keep that spark there yeah. to keep uh, igniting other passions yeah. and no definitely um, definitely endeavors for the future <laughs> but that's I really also, inspiring yeah. Just, yeah i think also just hearing your story and like hearing when you started with your company and stuff um like it's a scary step to like to take that plunge off to see like take something stable versus something you're not sure about. But I think like uh, your story really just shows that sometimes the risk is worth uh, like you know the, you get the reward in the end and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to do a quick segue real quick. I know you spoke about 
say your psychology degree that I mean while you majored in psychology um, I just wanted to say like I know a lot of actors like Natalie Portman and stuff have psychology degrees as well and they say it helps influence their acting and stuff I wanted to know from your side does it also help you with like helping understand your acting or even with your comedic side like with stand up understanding how people's minds work and stuff how, how has that benefited you do you know what's the weirdest thing about psychology um, <laughs> if I tell you Kiru doesn't have a psychology degree right Kiru yeah, my yeah. wife yeah. And she is the most amazing psychologist on the planet, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so when I went to university and I wanted to study drama, and at that point in time, uh, when you chose a, a BA, you, you chose two majors. So mm. I knew drama was one. The other one, I kind of went, mm, there's law, there's um, hey, psychology. <laughs> okay, that sounds cool. <laughs> so that's pretty much how I made that choice. Look, I do believe that years later, because I think I never, I, I also, I won't lie, I never invested my mind or applied my mind to it. I kind of just studied mm-hmm. enough to pass, uh, mm-hmm. you know, at that point in time. But it's weird because almost years later, you know, when you have kids and you start uh, um, living life, the things that you actually read about thinking, you're just reading it to, 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 to pass a test, actually start um, making sense to you. Uh, Mm -hmm. about life, about people, about behavior. So from that perspective, I do believe that there was some uh, uh, information that I could use, but um, I'm not going to lie. I think when I chose it, it was was purely based on uh, because I had a second choice. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I, I, definitely. (laughs) And then um, apart from all your acting stuff, which is uh, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, you're also a very, like, a, an amazing comedian, right? You've done a lot of stage shows and stuff. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think comes first, acting or comedy? And how do they sort of feed off each other? My journey in comedy, comedy as such as a stand-up comedian is, is, a, is, a, is a different one compared to a lot of the other guys. Like, I work with guys like David Cow, who, you know, they were one of the pioneers in South Africa of, like, stand-up comedy and, and what have you. And they were more natural comedians. I've always been an actor slash comedian. Mm. So a big part of even my shows, um, even the comedy side of it was largely scripted comedy, of which I had to give myself 10% leeway to mess around and play with the audience and that kind of thing. But I wrote my story. So I looked at myself even as a comedian, more as a storyteller, mm. rather than a, a pure, pure stand-up comedian. Like, I mean, I've done quite a few sort of interviews um, with a guy that uh, called John Vlismus. And uh, you guys have showed sure yeah, John. Yeah, John's an yeah. absolute legend in yeah. the comedy industry. And I absolutely love the guy. But I think John, whenever he, he sees my stand-up comedian, he almost like, it's like, this guy is not pure. <laughs> this guy is not pure. Like, I just come here into our industry and just like trying to like tell him that he's not a purist like me. <laughs> That's pretty much my history in, in, in terms of that. But obviously, uh, uh, like a lot of my shows, like I do a lot of sketch comedy. I think that's one of my stylistic choices. You know, like I said, I've worked with some amazing performers and we, we just play numerous characters and tell stories just through those characters, not necessarily being mm-hmm. ourselves. So using funny costumes and colorful costumes and looks and accents and dialects. Um, you know, that's been probably the, the area of comedy that I probably most love. Um, mm. And I think that also stemmed, I think my inspiration for that was probably back in the 80s. I used to watch a lot of Faulty Towers, Monty Python. Um, <laughs> well, the British shows. Rowan yeah. Atkinson was probably one of my one of my favorites. Um, if I have to look at mm. guys like Will Smith, like Fresh Prince of Ballet, you know, we thought mm. we were so cool, you know, <laughs> trying to be rappers and stuff like, like, like Will, you know what I mean? Like, he was like, yeah. he was the guy of the time, you know? Yeah. So I grew up watching a lot of those amazing comedian guys. Jim Carrey was one of my greatest inspirations. You know, these big, big actors, yeah, yeah. massive facial expressions, you know, like, yeah. like I was one of those very guys. Very animated was, kind of movements. And yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's always been my sort of style because... Uh, that's what I grew up on and that's what I know and that's what I enjoy doing, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then like, you know, Keru as well. So um, I've, I found the most incredible partner because not only was she uh, one of my co-writers and producers, but she's a super funny woman. So one of the biggest and largest shows that I've done was a show called Love Guru, 
where we both mm. was just a two-hander and we kind of played yeah. all the characters. She played a few less than I did and literally stole the show. And then I was like, ah, I'm not going to do this anymore. You just came. <laughs> she was beautiful and all of that. And I'm like, ah, oh, I can't compete here, yeah, so I'm I've, done. I'm just going to try and direct some films now. <laughs> yeah, but well, well, leading into that action, I was going to ask, uh, because you come from so many diverse different ways of telling stories and stuff like that, like when you write for like a stage play or when you write for, let's say, just a comedy show versus when you write for a film, are the processes kind of the same or like do you have to like get into different zones to write for the different mediums? Yeah, look, the, 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 the process is the same in terms of writing, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I do write a lot with Kiru. So we do have quite a few brainstorming sessions now and we have a lot of fun um, on doing that. Mm -hmm. So the process is literally the same. It's about clearing your head finding a time and really trying not to be disturbed. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, going to the future, we plan on doing like Bali and Mauritius and, you know, just taking two weeks out and just writing I and mean, that kind of thing. But, you know, we've got children and stuff. We can't just leave them and go. So, you know, that's that's the, the ultimate goal, you know. Like, mm -hmm. you guys fend for yourself. Here's your milk bottle. You're cool. We <laughs> are. Yeah. See you later. So, you know, two weeks. Two weeks at milk yeah, bottle. Yeah, still yeah. Rash, ration yourself, guys. Don't get greedy. <laughs> the formats are different though, um, Kaelin. The formats are different when you're writing. Obviously, uh, depending on the genre that you're writing for. And if you were mm. comparing comedy, you know, comedy format for, for stage, comedy format for TV, comedy format for film, actually completely different. And there's a mm. science to, to writing, you know. Mm. There is, a, there is a, a formula of how to tell stories. Um, if you want to go the, the Hollywood route, but there's also, there's a, if you want to be different, you know, you've got to almost understand the formula, but be able to break that shackle completely and, mm. and, and write in a different way. But I think we've also all grown up on Hollywood and what's the right way to, mm. to do it. And yeah. there's a reason why they're so successful and why Hollywood is the biggest sort of entertainment industry in the world. Mm. And so they, they make sense. You know what I mean? If, if you are a, a, a builder and you're building a house and you're going to go, no, no, no. I'm not going to start with a foundation. I'm going to start with a roof. You know, get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it is a platform yeah. to learn and, and structure stuff. But I think the beauty of what Africa has um, and South Africa, obviously, we're probably one of the most, the richest, diverse nations anywhere in the world, you know, from, from a cosmopolitan, racial, ethnic, religious perspective we've got all types that are here mm -hmm. so we are yeah. one massive cultural melting pot so our stories are unique our stories do appeal to uh to everybody because mm -hmm. we've got a little bit of everybody in us so yeah. you know we want to still be authentic to ourselves and tell those stories in our authentic way but so it's finding that balance and that fusion between sort of hollywood format stories and storytelling um mm -hmm. and mixing it up with our own that's how i that's my opinion though yeah, that's mm. awesome. I definitely agree. I definitely wholeheartedly agree as well. Like when it comes to also like when I try to write stuff as well, I just try to see, okay, this is, I know this is ingrained in my head, but how is it like, how can I best retry and tell it like from a South African way? Because you can always make a South African film that American can't copy, but you can try and make an American film, but you'll never get right with that, you know? So yeah, yeah. I think what you said is like spot on. It's really the truth, honestly. Thank you so much, Sands. Uh, thank you for your insight and your guidance and all your advice. It was really, really appreciated. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, please smash that like button, smash it. And uh, please share with all your friends. And also, while you're down there, remember to hit the subscribe button. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. So if you can get there, that would be amazing. And also remember there's an audio version of this podcast available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else that you listen to your podcasts. But until next time, go out there, stay safe, and, and make, make your, your movie. movie.